we're expecting the worst, maybe maybe uh, a couple dozen uh, victims here. This could be the deadliest building fire in Oakland history. Party goers trapped in a maze of flames. We knew people were in there, and we were trying to get them out, and it was a labyrinth. At least nine people dead, dozens still missing. Tonight, the search for victims and answers. The fire tore through a warehouse in Oakland on 31st Avenue in the Fruitvale neighborhood. That's where Ken Bastida is tonight to begin our team coverage. Ken? All right, Brian, uh, thank you very much. Uh, you can see uh, now that we are uh, at the uh, uh, corner of International Boulevard and uh, 31st Avenue here. In Oakland, they are just getting ready to start a news conference. We will break away. The uh, Oakland Police Department is going to be giving uh, reporters the very latest on this thing. Oakland and Alameda County officials uh, are going to be holding their last briefing, uh, media briefing of the day. Uh, let's go ahead and listen in now. I believe they are starting. A coroner's division. Uh, what we'd like to share with you are some updates. I'm going to turn it over to Sergeant Kelly right now. Again, we want to remind you that tomorrow morning we'll have another press availability at 8 o'clock tomorrow morning. A press availability at 8. Sergeant? Our, our next update will be tomorrow morning at 8, 8, 8, 8, 8 a.m. Excuse me. Um, so for the next uh, over, overnight, we'll be working, and so we'll have a lot more information for you tomorrow morning. Where we are now, um, and... Uh, we, are, uh, we have recovered nine victims at this point. Those victims have been transported from this scene uh, to our coroner's bureau. Um, the identification process has begun with those victims. We are rushing their fingerprints uh, to identify them and then notify uh, family members uh, uh, as we get those identifications. Um, we are bringing in uh, heavy equipment, and you will see heavy equipment uh, Coming here on the scene uh, throughout the night, we're bringing in a crane, uh, dumpster trucks, uh, and uh, excavators, uh, like we had talked about. That has to move uh, very slowly because when we're pulling debris, we want to make sure that there's not victims uh, entrapped in that debris, uh, and so we need to be very respectful that way. Uh, as we uh, as we continue on here tonight, um, there there have been some good things that have happened, and when I say that. Um, we have uh, been able to put some families' uh, fears at ease by locating uh, loved ones that were believed to be inside here that, that were actually found to be alive. So that, that our Family Assistance Center has been huge in, in doing that. Um, uh, that being said, we still have a lot of families that are in that unknown stage, and they're grieving, um, and they remain at our Family Assistance Center. Um, we're asking uh, people, uh, the numbers that we've put out, do not call that number unless you have pertinent information to this investigation. Uh, our phone lines are being overwhelmed with requests from media and other people uh, throughout the world that are calling. So we, we ask that you uh, ease off on calling those phone numbers unless you need to. Um, uh, we, we do not have at this time the ability to return every phone call. So if, if press is not here, then we're probably not going to be able to get back to you. So unless you have uh, an affiliate here or someone here at the scene, we're not going to be able to get back to you. Uh, we're not going to make all those calls. There's, there's hundreds and hundreds of calls, and, and we possibly cannot return those. Um, go ahead. Yeah, we'll take some questions. Um, not a lot to update right now. We still remain in the building. Uh, there's now it's dark. It makes our work s slow down quite a bit. Um, that uh, we have to continue to worry about the engineering problems, the structural integrity, and so that's uh, that is more difficult at night because you can't see things that you normally would see during the day. Uh, you, you know, I, I will say this, and we, we've been saying uh, uh, at, at least two dozen people, and and, and I, I, we once again don't want to get into um, uh, some grand total number because that causes un unwarranted fears for people. Um, we we have uh, enough information from family members and stuff that we're trying to um, deal with the the names that we have and and either acknowledge that that someone has been found or not. 
And so we're, we're kind of moving things into two categories. Those people that we know um, that we've, we've located and those people we know that are unaccounted for. Sergeant Kelly, I want to clarify. Oh, pardon me, hold on one second. Right, right here. Uh, we, we've, we have located um, um, several dozen people that were believed to have been missing that are not uh, missing anymore. Yeah, we still have, uh, yes, we still have at least a couple dozen outstanding uh, people that need to be located. Let us go to this gentleman's question. The, the number nine has been given to us all day long, nine dead, and then we expect the number to go up. Covered nine bodies. Are these the bodies that you knew all along where they were? Is that why we have nine recovered? And so, so, nine so the, the nine bodies that we've recovered were not where they were. They were easily accessible. So those were those were bodies that we could get to rather quickly and remove. Um, to, to just follow up. Is that why we've been saying nine all day long? Because you knew where these bodies were. Correct. And I think we have described in our previous press conferences the uh, conditions inside that structure and how uh, hard and challenging it is to work inside there. There's a lot of areas that we cannot get to, um, uh, that we need to cut away parts of the building and use excavation techniques and, uh, and, and like we had talked about, cutting holes in the side of the building. Go ahead, sir. Right here. Um, we, we have made, uh, you know, I, I feel we've made a lot of progress in recovering the nine victims that we have because that's going to provide closure for, or at least notifications to those families so they can begin to start to heal. Um, we don't even know uh, how far into the process we are because we don't absolutely have a number of people that we know are deceased inside there. Um, they're, they're, that will take quite a bit of time. So that's why we've been trying to stay away from, from a number uh and because uh, we really truly don't know. We knew there were nine. Our focus was the nine uh, originally because they were readily accessible and, and we've, we've done that. We've accomplished that mis mission and now we begin to go in deeper into the building and that's where all the, the infrastructure problems are. Sergio? Go ahead, Sergio. Um, these, we're working on the outskirts of the building, uh, and, and we really haven't got into the internal components of the building yet. Sergeant, hold, hold on, hold on one second, sir. Sergio, please. Sergio. Yeah. So we're going to continue working through the night. We've brought in um, lights. Um, we're going to flood this place with light as much as we can, but nighttime operations are going to slow us down a little bit. So um, we, we have to move slowly here and, and very judiciously in, in getting this done. Go ahead, sir. Sergeant, so you've recovered nine, not to be insensitive. Have any more been seen? Are there some that you know are uh, we, we know there are, there are bodies that are in there that we can't get to. Um, that, have been seen that, that have been seen but not recovered. We, uh, I, we, uh, we. It's it's been widely known that, that a lot of the victims are in their tw their twenties uh, and and young adults. No minors that we know of at this time. Yeah. So as as we do the recovery, we have to be mindful of the investigation that that is to come. The second part of this. And so we have to make sure that we preserve uh, the debris and wreckage uh, properly um, so that it can be looked at later. So that's all being taken into account. That is correct. Go, go ahead. Correct, and and and, uh, and and that may be you know it may be more than two dozen. So I mean uh, we, we cannot give you a definitive number. It's just you know one person uh, being killed here is is horrible. Let alone nine and maybe possibly more. So. Um, 
several several dozen people um, that were thought uh, missing here have been located and are alive. And so that's the good news that we have to offer at this time. So is that give you better indication exactly how many people were inside? Um, uh, no, it, it hasn't, unfortunately. We, we don't know how many people were inside uh, when this happened. We're trying to get that. Uh, we, we, there's no way we could tell you what the cause of death is at this point. Um, it, it could be a, a, a number of things. Uh, there's a collapse in there. There's, there's fire. There's smoke. There's, there's a lot of reasons why people perished in this building. Yes. So the, the family assistance center that we set up, uh, that was done um, very quickly um, uh, at a moment's notice, where we had uh, officers and fire personnel and city workers um, come and set up a family assistance center uh, on the fly, um, that place has become uh, a central location for family members to come. When they come there, we're able to we're able to uh, speak with them, gain additional information. Sometimes they come there thinking that they they are missing a loved one. Um, they en end up end up making phone calls and and through networking, they find their loved one. They notify us and then they leave. And so um, there are still quite a lot of people at the family assistance center um, that still need answers, and that's what we're working on trying to do. There, there, there's a lot of people at the Family Assistance Center, and uh, there's a lot going on there. And, and the Red Cross and other uh, agencies that are working with us to provide uh, grief counseling and, and assistance to these families. It's, it's a very difficult time. Go, go, go ahead. Yes, sir. I think there's families that are concerned uh, that that maybe if some one of their family members at one time or another had a connection to this building, um, they're concerned. And if they haven't heard from that family member, then they're they're thinking the worst. We're trying to ease those fears by using the family assistance center by answering those calls. Holly, go ahead. We are anticipating the next 48 hours. Uh, we have, at a minimum, slated for recovery that this area will remain closed for the next 48 hours. Um, so absolutely, we will be here as long as it takes. Do you have information about the people that were recovered? Were they all party goers? Uh, or were there people that were living in that space or working in that space? Do you have any information about who these people were? A lot of those people have identified themselves on social media. You, uh, the media, may know more about that than we do at this time. Our efforts are focused on the Family Assistance Center and on the recovery efforts here at the scene. We haven't had a chance to even get that far uh, into this investigation where we've talked to people um, that were at this scene. Ma'am, uh, we'll get to you. Ma'am, hold on one second. We're going to get to just the lady. Um, there's more. I, like I said, I don't want to get into the to the numbers thing again, but but there, there's there's bodies that are trapped in there that we need to cut from the wreckage. We need to do that carefully because when we begin to cut uh, into the wreckage, that can lead to collapse and structural integrity issues. So that has to be done very systematically. And we'll go with the last question you have. We've heard all those things too, and uh, we actually don't know that. We can tell you that it was not a, a sanctioned event by the city or a permitted event by the city. Um, so what exactly was going on there um, it's, has still be determined. Uh, we just know through reports um, from some of the witnesses, from the media, from social media, that there was there was some type of party or exhibit or art type uh, uh, function going on there. That's all the questions uh, that we're going to answer for now. That's all the questions we're going to answer for now. Um, we will be back at 8 o'clock in the morning with, with hopefully a lot more details and a lot more information. So we thank you for uh, your attention. And you, you, uh, you guys can remain in this location uh, throughout the night if you need to. All right. Uh, you have been watching uh, Sergeant Ray Kelly of the Alameda County Sheriff's Department uh, give a briefing 
to reporters that are here at uh, International Boulevard and 31st Avenue in the Fruitvale District where this building uh, collapsed after a severe fire last night, explaining how this is very ginger work right now. It has to be done very carefully uh, so as not to disturb, uh, uh, well, the integrity of the building itself. It doesn't cave in further, but also so that they can uh, facilitate the recovery of what they believe are several more people, uh, victims inside this building.